Good morning, everyone. Isn't it a beautiful day? Celebrate the homecoming. It's a beautiful lady. Let's all have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity today to gather here. Lord, in this beautiful sunshine, this is the day that you have made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Knowing that, God, you're able to do exceeding abundant above all we're able to ask for. Lord, you are our joy, you are our peace, and sorrow, God, you are our comfort. And I pray, God, that you bring peace to this family and comfort to them during their loss. Knowing that, God, to be absent from the body is to be present with you. And, God, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to celebrate this life with this family. And I pray, God, that you would bring them much comfort and peace and joy. Kruger Trelecki, 94, a longtime resident of Hot Springs, passed away on August 23rd, 2022. She was born on July 20th, 1928, in the primarily German community of Gross Orland, Orland, Poland, to the late Adam and August Kruger. Edith was preceded in death by her husband of 54 years, William Trelecki her sister Erica Voss and her daughter-in-law Patricia A. Terlecki. She is survived by her son Roman Terlecki, daughter Judith S. Terlecki, brother Bruno and Kruger of, of, Wood, of Woodridge, Illinois, grandchildren Dylan Oliver, Mark, Hannah Oliver, Lee and Brittany Terlecki, and Sarah Terlecki, plus many nieces and nephews and grandchildren. We're so glad to have you guys out today. A poem, Fill Not Your Heart. Fill not your heart with pain and sorrow, but remember me in every tomorrow. Remember the joy, the laughter, the smiles. I've only gone to rest a little while. Although my leaving causes pain and grief, my going has eased my hurt and given me relief. So dry your eyes and remember me not as I am now, but as I used to be, because I will remember you all and look and look on with a smile. Understand in your hearts I've only gone to rest a little while. As, lo as long as I have the love of each of you, I can live my life in the hearts of all of you. song to honor a beautiful lady. One of these days we'll all meet again. There is come in a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day. I will see when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand, leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day, that will be. No more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there and forever. I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day. I will see you 
have a moment of time of reflection and today anybody have anything they would like to share or stories they would like to tell briefly? I would like to talk about my mother, Edith Burr, who returned like peace. Explain it. She was a devout Christian. Mm -hmm. She was a devout Methodist. She was raised to her family as Lutherans, and yet she believed in all denominations. She had all kinds of Bibles in several languages. She reached the American dream in America. She kissed the ground at the Statue of Liberty. She met my father at the Brookfield Zoo in front of the polar bears. They couldn't speak a word of English, but they fell in love, and all they ate were potatoes. I was christened in a Greek Catholic, Greek Orthodox, Church, Judita as Susanna Trelecki. My father's name was Vasil. We couldn't speak a word of English until I was five years old. I grew up with Madonna and Bill Gates. From the Chicago William P. Gray High School, my mother cooked every day. Her favorite foods were Streiselkuchen, Flammenkuchen, and Kartoffelkuchen. She never ate at McDonald's or Taco Bell or Kentucky Fried Chicken. She was the most amazing mother the world has ever known. She was a legend. And she never thanked me, and I loved her with all my heart and soul. And I'll be honored to be buried with her right here on the Lithuanian section. My address is 385 Trippy Lane. I live with Anna and my son Mark, and we're looking for Dylan. The last time I saw Dylan was in San Diego, California. I was a Miss Germany missionary. I've been to England, France, Austria, Switzerland, East Berlin, and West Berlin. And I'm a missionary. And I play the piano at my church. I play Amazing Grace in the Garden. And the Pentecostal hymn book. And the Star Spangled Banner. Thank you. Anyone else? I would like to say something, please. Should I stand? Exactly. Yes, sir. <coughs> stand, please, so everybody can see me. Hi, I'm, I'm Mark. I'm one of Edith's grandchildren. And, um... <coughs> I'm going to be honest with you. This is a day that I hoped would never come. I knew I'd stand here and not know what to do or not know what to say. And I think I was right. Edith Terlecki was the most wonderful woman I've ever met in my life. The most important person I've ever met. And like my mom said, she was a legend. I'm very proud to be a part of her story. She taught me the value of hard work and that sometimes things don't go the way you want them to. And that's okay because Dawn is around the corner. She taught me it's okay to cry in German to get out of a speeding ticket. It's a true story. She taught me that it's okay to re-gift the random things in your house on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Those were the best Christmases ever. My wife lost her father shortly before we met, and um, it was around Christmas time, and whenever she came into our family, she got to experience a Turlecki family Christmas, and it made her love Christmas again. And that's the kind of effect Edith Turlecki had on people. I think most importantly, she taught me how to love my family unconditionally, no matter what. There's not a person that she met that she didn't touch. I'm proud to have been with my grandmother for 35 years of my life. I'm proud that my, my wife and my children got to meet her and know her. And I'll continue sharing her story for the rest of my life because it's a story worth sharing. It's, um, it's kind of a funny thing, you know, you ever stop and think about it. What if she never made it out of Europe with bombs falling and 
Russian soldiers doing their worst? What if she never came to America? What if she never went to the zoo that day and met a man named William? I looks like you. I look just like him. And he's here today too. We wouldn't be here today. Thank you guys. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. we should feel and uh, the sorrow of the loss of a mother a grandmother a friend a spouse because of the connections that we build over a lifetime you know we when I suffered the loss of my father I didn't realize how much of effect he had on my life until he was gone one of the one of the days that that really speaks to me after his passing was the day I needed an answer. Just something simple as electricity running a plug in my house. I reached down, picked the phone, and I dialed the number. And realizing just a moment as I broke down, he wasn't there. But yet I took a moment just to reflect on what would Dad do. And sometimes when our loved ones go, that's what happens. We have questions that we always depended on them for. Always. Whether there's a recipe, whether there's how to make bread, or how, how, does, how does that recipe go, Mom? How, or Grandma, how does that go? And we always try to write it down or try to put it into memory and uh, try to recollect on how, because we want it just like they fixed it. Or we want the atmosphere just like they had it, whether it's Christmas time, birthdays, anniversaries. We long for those times. And we and when, when they and when they and when the Lord comes and takes them, we feel that sorrow. And that's the way 
our lives are often held is feeling the sorrow. In, in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, Paul is talking to the people at Thessalonica about our blessed hope that we have in Christ. You see, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And to live is, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And Paul wrote, said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. See, we may sorrow, but we have hope with our sorrow. And having hope, that's what matters most of all. Because hope is an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast, unmovable. He said, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with the Lord, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And if you're down today, I want you to know I brought comforting words because Paul wouldn't stop there. He said, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Our comfort, our hope in Christ is knowing that this life that we live is not the end. This isn't it. You know, life, death is not the end. It's a comma joining two thoughts together. And one of these days, we're going to meet folks again in another, in, a, in, a, in another realm, another dimension. But all I know is if, if you, if you want to meet them, and if you want to meet the Lord, then we have to live a life that He would have us to live. And in the, in the testimony of y'all, you wonderful people today, is about the goodness of this beautiful soul that we're laying to rest. That how that maybe you may not ever hear her voice in this world, in this lifetime again. But I want you to know that there is so many other ways you see her. You're going to see her and you're going to experience her presence in your life with memories. And with and think about all the, her, I mean, her favorite meals. I mean, there's certain things that, that live on in our lives with our loved ones. I mean, for, my, for instance, when my dad passed away. You know, I can't watch a John Wayne movie without him being there. And knowing what he would say, you know, same thing every time. It never changed. But one thing about it, God is in the business of giving us peace. And peace is something that we desperately need. And we can be at peace knowing that God is in control. And I'd rather trust Him with this beautiful love, this beautiful mother, this beautiful spouse, this beautiful grandmother. I'd rather trust her with Him than anybody else. So let's, let's have that hope and peace today knowing that God is has got everything under control, and we're we're at peace with that. And so, and we don't sorrow as others that have no hope. We sorrow with our hope. We're we're sad, but but on the other hand, we understand to be absent from our bodies is to be present with Him. And one of these days, the roll is going to be called up yonder, and we'll be there. We'll be there. Let's pray this this after this morning. Father in heaven, I thank you for this great opportunity. Lord, to lay this beautiful soul to rest. God, we commend her to you, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, knowing that, God, that you're in control. God, her spirit has gone back to you that created it. God, when you created humanity, you breathed into man, and man became a living soul. The very breath we breathe is not our own, but yours that give it. And I pray, God, that you receive, Lord God, this soul. I pray, God, that you would just touch this family and bring them peace and comfort during these times. Father, we know that you're in control. And nobody can deliver from out of your hands. So, Father, do the work that needs to be done. And we give you glory for all things because we know that you're good. And your mercy endures to all generations. Your truth, God, to all generations. And we're standing on it. Every promise. Every promise in the book is ours. And we're standing on your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray.
you guys can stay as long as you'd like.